I'm back with another Minecraft video. Today I have a piston-powered clock that keeps real time, but it stays on the Minecraft schedule. For those who don't know, the Minecraft day-night uh, cycle, it is 10 minutes of day, a minute and a half sunset, 7 minutes of night, and a minute and a half of sunrise, so in total that makes 20 minutes. Uh, the sun's just risen, and we're still in the first minute of the day, so um, that's why the number is so low right now. Let's watch it change. All right first minute. Alright, so if you happen to watch my previous video, I made a clock that just counts up um, using these two piston arrays that one will trigger the other. So it's essentially the same idea on this, except slightly scaled up and slightly different. The main difference being the clock that's powering it. This will rotate around every one second. I've timed it to be pretty accurate. Um, over the course of one day, it gets off less than a second. One Minecraft day, that is. It gets off less than a second. So it probably probably needs changing. Well, if, if you were to put something like this on a server, you'd probably want to, uh, you know, keep an eye on it every uh, few real days, at least. Um, I wouldn't recommend running it um, constantly in single player or something like that, because... Uh, as you can see, my render distance is awful, especially when I'm recording. When I'm not recording, it's not too bad, but yeah. Alright, so every second, this uh, piston array rotates once. And every five seconds, this piston array rotates once. Now, you might be wondering um, why every five seconds instead of every ten, because this actually powers the ten slot. But um, the memory array would have been too small to fit the power on this side into it if it had been half the size. It just wouldn't have happened. So instead I just have double of everything and it it won't change um it won't like retract and then push out uh at the five second mark or anything like that. Anything weird like that. Um so then so this one is about to change. Once the, the timer gets there. So this is the minute uh, hand. Well, it actually powers both the other screens. Um, so the first seven blocks power the first screen, and the second seven power the second. Um, I chose to do this just because the second screen only is a zero, um, nothing, or a one. Um, and that's just, it wasn't too hard to add that on to this side. So yeah. Um, other than this, the changed clock, it's not really uh, anything different, really. I added a, a pulsing um, I don't know, colon shape, I guess, that you might see in a regular uh, digital clock. I think it adds to the touch. You might not have been able to see it in the time lapse, or it might have just been really, um, really. Uh, bad looking or strange looking because it wasn't grabbing all the frames for that time lapse. So it might have been out for some and gone for like the next like couple seconds. I don't know. But yeah, dewiring uh, I just copied for the first three and then I had to do this uh, last one myself just because I wanted to keep the spacing the same. I could have scrunched these together a little bit more and, well, I probably could have done everything slightly more uh, together, but I don't think this looks too bad in both the day and the night. You can see it from quite a distance, which is good. The pistons, I think, look a lot better than having a redstone torch on this uh, end, because it's impossible to see during the day. And this is very visible day and night, especially thanks to these glowstone that's in the middle of each uh, seven-segment display and in the middle of this. So yeah, thanks for watching the video.